In this video, we're going to drive a formula that will allow us to calculate the geostationary orbit. Now, a geostationary orbit is a circular orbit around any planet where a satellite's orbital period matches the planet's rotational period. If we were to take Earth as our planet, this would mean that our satellite would orbit the Earth every 24 hours above the equator. So if you were standing on the Earth and you needed to communicate with this satellite, the satellite will be in the same place in the sky 24 hours a day. So our satellite here is undergoing uniform circular motion. This means it has a constant velocity along this circular path here. It's not accelerating or decelerating along this path. Because its orbital acceleration is zero, we know that its centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. And v is the velocity of the satellite in its orbit. The centripetal acceleration is directed towards the Earth or towards the center of mass of the planet. And this acceleration keeps our satellite in a perfectly circular orbit. Now we've got another acceleration working on our satellite at the same time. And this is the acceleration due to gravity of, of the planet. Now this acceleration can be expressed like this. G is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the planet divided by the distance from the center of mass. So the distance the satellite is from the center of mass squared. Now for the satellite to remain in perfectly circular orbit, the centripetal acceleration caused by the uniform circular motion and the gravitational force must balance. So AC must equal G if the satellite is to remain in this perfectly circular orbit. So we can rewrite this as the velocity of the satellite squared divided by the distance from the center of mass is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the planet divided by the distance squared. But there's also something else we need to take into account. Because we're focused on a geostationary orbit here, where the orbital period matches the rotation of the Earth, we know that the period or the time it takes for the satellite to traverse this circle here is equal to the length of the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, divided by its velocity. And this will give us the, the amount of time it takes for the satellite to move one complete orbit. And we want to fix this period to the planet's rotational period. So if we're looking at the Earth here, the Earth rotates every 23 hours and roughly 56 minutes. So we have a bit of an issue here because we're left with two unknowns. We don't know the velocity required to keep the satellite in perfectly circular orbit with a period of 23 hours and 56 minutes. And we don't know the, the exact distance that is required for this planet's mass. So what can we do here? Well, let's first rearrange this equation here to make velocity the subject. So the velocity of the satellite is equal to 2 pi r divided by the period, which is 23 hours, 56 minutes. Let's substitute this side of the equation into this velocity here. What do we get? Well, first, let's move this radius over to this side of the equation. So we get velocity squared is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the planet 
divided by r squared multiplied by r. And the r squared down here cancels out. So we've got g m p over r, which is equal to v squared. And now if we substitute this side of the equation into this v squared here, we get 2 pi r over the period squared. So you can see here that we've eliminated one of the unknowns that we didn't know before. We've still got the radius, which we don't know, but we don't need to work out the velocity anymore. So we do know the mass of the planet. We know what the gravitational constant is. We have our period, so the length of a day and night cycle of the planet. And all we need to do is rearrange this to make R the subject. So I'm going to square root each side. Gives us 2 pi r over t, which is equal to the square root of g m p over r. And we can square root the numerator and denominator separately. So this equals square root of g m p divided by the square root of r. Multiply both sides by the period is equal and divide 2 pi on both sides. And let's move this root over to the left hand side. When we have two bases multiplied together, we add their powers. So the radius, the radius to the power of 3 over 2 is equal, is equal to the gravitational constant to the power of a half the mass of the planet to the power of a half, multiplied by the period, divided by 2 pi. And the very last thing we need to do to remove this fractional power is to raise each variable here by the power of 2 and then cube root it, giving us r, which is equal to g to the power of a half squared, which is g, same for the mass of the planet, t squared over 2 squared, which is 4, pi squared, and then, we cube, and then we cube root all of this. And that's our final formula. And I forgot to square the pi. There we go.